After last week's Blue Ribbon Affair, it's back to business as usual for our drivers. Maybe we'll have retained a few of the new faces, but regardless, if they haven't adapted yet, this will be another steep learning curve track. Let's see what a trip to California holds as we get ready to watch round seven of the IMSA Vintage Series, and you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Hi, I'm Joe Peak, and with me in the booth is Craig King. Behind the scenes is our director, Daniel Costello, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Sonoma has gone through various names over the years and has seen plenty of layout changes. To show you what we'll be running today, let's head to our track guide. Welcome to Sonoma Raceway. One of California's most famous road courses, it resides just north of San Francisco. It's been host to a wide variety of styles of racing, including sports cars, indie cars, motorcycles, and even drag racing. But in recent decades, it's become most well known for holding one of NASCAR's rare road course weekends. For most tracks, this cornucopia would be a stretch, but considering the array of five different layouts to choose from, it's quite easy for the circuit to be adapted to any series needs. Most of the layouts clock in at around two to two and a half miles in length and always feature an impressive amount of elevation change. This means many of the corners present the driver with a blind entry or apex. Some of these have a very distinct visual look, making them instantly recognizable. Corners such as the chute and the final hairpin feature street course-like walls surrounding the track, while the carousel is both picturesque and challenging. 
with few long straights, passing is often considered very difficult, but it rarely leaves races with a lack of action. Mistakes can be easy to make, offering opportunities for the brave. And it's not just the track itself which is tough. The pit entry's narrow path requires precise driving for those looking to make up time and leapfrog their competitors during stops. With more than 40 years of racing under its belt, Sonoma has become a staple for West Coast race fans. And what could be better than a glass of vino on a sunny hillside while the sound of engines echo around you? Well, before the days of NASCAR being here, this really was a sports car haven, Craig. Yeah, you do say it, Joe. Sonoma is a track mostly known for its stock car racing, but this 12-corner, 2.53-mile track has a lot of history in sports car racing, and it's thanks in part to its elevation changes, the high-speed final sector, and the site of the vineyards. So the GTPs will be looking to keep the speeds up around the track, with key points being turn 7, after the drag strip, to the wide hairpin at turn 11 but they will have to avoid the raised curbs at the first half of the track. That will throw in, sorry, first half of the track will throw into the mix. Anything upsetting the suspension of these Nissans will cause them to lose control. Those curves will do that. For the GTOs, it's all about controlling the speed through the corners. Hard braking down at turn four and the aforementioned turn seven will catch the Audis out. But it's a downhill turn six and the S's that will catch any driver out who is looking to carry too much speed. Now, when it comes to multi-class, it's going to be a challenge. Corners like turn one, they look easy enough to make a move. But when you have a GTO breaking for the corner and a GTP going flat out, it can throw a spanner in the works. And the same can be said around the S's at 8, 9, and 10. Where if you don't get the pass done before the track tightens up, you will find yourself losing a lot of time behind the traffic. Joe, one last thing to mention will be the track temps. It's gonna be a warmish race and that will bring tire wear into effect so managing those tires will be key for the drivers and i gotta be honest i don't want any marbles being flung into my glass of wine <laughs> yeah i can understand that and boy there's a lot of turns here that are going to chew up those tires that is for sure uh, now we said that this is going to be going back to normal so let's take a look at the race details and what it's going to uh, entail today uh, I said round seven earlier. It is round six, actually, here as we hit the halfway point. Uh, and it is uh, going to be uh, uh, just, uh, uh, of course, uh, not 45 laps, as we saw, as that was uh, from a little bit earlier today. But this is going to be a 40-minute race uh, that they are going to be running out here. Uh, but uh, just as normal, they have no spare car, and uh, they do have an incident limit to try and worry about. Now, this track... Uh, doesn't usually see drivers go off as much without accruing damage, so probably not going to be that big of a concern today. We've got a few of the lap times in as we're going to take uh, a look at uh, the uh, track details here real shortly. At least there we go. Now we've got it up. The other thing that I didn't mention, it is open setup, but I got to mention that it's uh, got so many twisty bits that you probably are going to want to crank the wing in here uh, as straight line speed. Not going to be as important, although if you can try to get a little bit maybe down the drag strip into the hairpin could give you something out here. We'll see whether or not that is the case. In the meantime, it uh, looks like uh, our drivers have uh, managed to get a few laps in. Timothy Reed is currently at the top of the provisional pole for the GTPs with a 15-3, and he's unable to improve on his second lap. But I'm not seeing many drivers that look like they're in position to try and change that, although Van de Sant might be able to do it, Craig. Yeah, Van der Sant might be able to go for a lap here as well. Mickey Friesen just going pole in the GTOs. We'll see that in a moment. And you're looking at Van der Sant through the S's, which, like I said, just look how it tightens up as well. And there is a little bit of an elevation change here, Joe. So they have to be worried about that come through. This is his first lap. He'll have time to do a second. Because look at the time Timothy reset. That is the litmus test here. It is so quick. And I think he's abandoned this lap to go once again, Joe. 
All right. Well, let's see what this uh, winds up at. If he, if he did abandon it here as he crosses the line. Yeah, because it looks like he had that off track. So uh, that's uh, not going to be it for Vandesand. He's got enough time to come around for a second time as we check out some of our GTOs now. Rowan Van Hixie currently sitting in fourth position. Sliumba actually has the quickest lap right now over Mickey Friesen. Let's see what Joram has underneath him. A 30.7 is not going to improve, so he'll stay fourth at best. Yeah, we've got Robert Noka here. Just a, I believe, a new name to the series. Not one that I have seen before in the last few months here, and he's just really having to fight that car. And of course, remember, it's four-wheel drive, not all-wheel, four-wheel drive in these Audis. And you just start to see how much steering you have to crank in here fight the overspeed and use every inch of the track there coming now into turn 11 the hairpin you want to avoid those tires they're not like the real world ones that tony stewart decided to knock down a few years ago they are real and hard on this will come across the line it's going to be a respectable time as well as a 30.5 very respectable out there for the first time but i believe it's not going to count uh, it doesn't look like it. He does not improve, so he'll stay in fifth place. Vanisant puts one down, and it's good enough for the front row. Won't take him up to pole, but thank goodness he got a time in. This would have been a rough one if he's coming from the back of the field. Yeah, now Alex Mass is the last man. He's not going to get a time in. So that looks like it's going to be all to be done. Van der Sand, though, going from last to second, especially on a track like this, Joe, because look, just got a good look here at the track. It's wide, but it's not wide enough to try and send those big, wide prototypes side by side. And again, this is one of the overtaking corners for any car class or multi-class here down into turn four. But then it does narrow off a bit to go around the corner. This is the bit you have to go following, and we'll see in a moment as we come down the carousel. Just look at this space. Yes, if you're a GTP, you can get around the GTOs here, but when it comes to overtaking, it's about here getting on the throttle as early as possible. I don't think Moss is going to be able to complete this lap. 15 seconds is just way too short to make it all the way across the field here uh, and back to the finish line in time. So that means that our grid is set. Uh, everybody's managed to put one down that wanted one. So looks like we'll go to that in just a moment here and uh, a slightly smaller field than what we saw back at Road America, but still going to give us plenty to stress about uh, out on the track as Timothy Reed manages to put it on pole. Can he hold on to that for the course of this race as Van de Sant's going to be following him and Dustin Heroder is going to be in P3. Laus Olsen didn't have the best of times out at Talladega in the Lotus 49. Let's see what he can do from fourth here today back in the IMSA Vintage Series as Fabian Jungbluth will be P5. Then you've got Jack Wells starting next to him on the outside of that third row. As Brendan Lim will start from seventh, eight tour Sintes Galindo. He always says that qualifying is not his forte. He's all the way down in eighth today, kind of showing it. Alan Breteau going to be P9 with Seamus Power rounding out your top 10. From there, Zach Buchanan will start in 11th. Junior Honma will be in 12th position. AJ Roper begins in P13 today. After that, Martin Kratrick starts from the 14th position. Emerson Gaudin inside of the next row in P15. Javier Del Omo, kind of far down for him. Wonder if he failed to set a qualifying time. No, he put one in. Not sure why he's so far down in 16th. Victor Rodriguez will be 17th. And then last of the GTPs is Carlos Fonseca in 18th. Well, we get to the GTOs and it's Andreas Salumba who will be leading him off with Mickey Friesen in his box of neutrals beside him. And then Noel Lundberg will be in for Joram van Hixi in fourth. Robert Noka will be fifth position. Beside him will be Doug Cloud. And then Francois Schrenk will be seventh. With Andreas Schuster down in eighth. A very slow performance there in quality, but we know what he's like in the race. Sam Skogard will be ninth. And Fulman Pollock will be tempt to round out the first five rows. And then we go into Ian Philip Johnson in 11th. Brandon Elkins, 12th. The last of the time qualifiers. As Andreas, Andreas Valentejas will be 13. Looks like he's going last to first again. Alex Mass, as we saw, did not get a time in. And Hector Credo Suarez will be 15th in a 15 GTO field and an 18 GTP field. Yep, like I said, plenty to keep everybody on their toes out there because uh, 
I can promise you the, the laps around here are not that long and uh, it's going to be tight with the traffic and it's warmed up just a bit since the qualifying tonight for Fahrenheit now 34 Celsius not outrageously hot but definitely not ideal especially if it will continue to uh, get hotter since it's only just past 1230 in the afternoon right now there is your field of uh, GTOs also following their way around as they'll have their separate start as they traditionally do in this series uh, to get things going just to give a bit of space kind of surprising I mean look at how cloudy is up above them and yet the track is this hot yeah, I was looking at that myself. It's a, it's pretty crazy how the cloud is there, but obviously the track has not been cloudy earlier in the day in terms of the weather you know, on the sim, so it's probably allowed the track to just warm up a bit. Heat's still in the air, though, as we can see that, especially with the humidity, about 50%. So that does also add in a little bit. So it to me, it looks like maybe the track will get a little bit less cloudy, but looking at the weather quickly, Joe, it's going to stay like this for the rest of the race. Yeah, just uh, 40 minutes is probably not enough time for things to clear up, especially from what we can see there. Not not spotting uh, any big open blue skies off in the distance for it to blow these clouds away as they now head through the S's portion at the end of the lap. This is going to be absolutely diabolical, Craig, when the two classes come together. Yeah, you and I did a broadcast here in this series last year in season three and uh, season four. One of the other, it was pretty insane to just see the closing distances, let alone the car trying to make the moves, but the closing distances. Look out for desperation. You do not want to get caught behind a GTO in the S's, as I mentioned earlier today. Out of the final hairpin towards the start finish line, Timothy Reed's going to have control of the field. How early is he going to go or is he going to wait? make them wait? He's given it a bit of time. Now he's on the throttle. Green flag is out. That jump helped him tremendously. Van de Sant had no response, but a rotor is going to be slotting in right behind him. It's turn two that is the trouble zone here often at the starts of races. So far, so good. And it looks like the GTPs are through. And in the GTOs, they had to start breaking into turn 11. They're all good at the moment. Some drivers looking to make some early moves. Forben Pollock was trying to make the moves earlier on, but could not get a space, could not be squeezed. So he's just hold on. They're keeping a little bit single file at the front. And at the back, there is a little bit of a side by side, but it's all quiet on the rest of Western front. Back to our GTPs. This is Seamus Power versus Alan Brito. Of course, we got Zach Buchanan in behind him, taking a bit of a peek. He's very close. This is one of those popular places for passing. Is that too deep from Allen? It looks like it is as he swings wide and gives up 11th. Yeah, that's turn seven. It's a double right-hander before you call it a hairpin there. And it just goes to show you cannot really try and overshoot it just for the nature of that. You're almost back on Frostle mid-corner in that double right. And I think that may just cost, cost him a little bit of a moment there. Back to Noker, now here sitting in fifth position. Uh, the lead cars are all pretty much still in a train, even though they've already hit the S's now, be led by Sliumba, Friesen second, Lundberg, Van Hixie, and Noker rounding out your top five. Here they go side by side. Just look at Alex Mass getting four positions so far at the start of this race. We'll have to see later on how he managed to do that. A oh, lock up by Friesen, not going to cost them as they're all in a little bunch here. You've got GTOs on the pond at the moment, and they're just waiting for the right opportunity because look at how patient they are. The gaps are just a little bit spread up for anyone to make some risky moves, but coming up here into turn one and turn two, not a lot of places to make moves. Still riding on board with Rob as now they come back over the top of the hill at turn two that twists down through three A and B. And then, of course, you have to watch out for turn four at the bottom of the hill here. Pretty steep plunge into this braking zone. It's caught a lot of people out, but not Noker this time. He still stays glued to the back of Van Hixie. Yeah, they're all staying pretty bunched up at the moment, and you're just waiting to see. We do have Zachary Buchanan going around here at the top of the hill. It looks like he, oh, that's right, that's at turn seven. I reckon he may have got tapped there, or he may have just caught onto the curbing there. Back with Robert Noka, though, and you've not missed anything. These guys are just happy enough to just race together. 
Yeah, they know that there's going to be opportunities later on, I'm sure, with the traffic coming through. I can't say that Buchanan hit the wall, unfortunately, from what I was able to catch on my end. So uh, maybe we'll get a better look at that a little later. Noker still trying to make sure that he uh, keeps Joram honest here. Like I said, or like you said, really, uh, uh, not really trying any moves at this stage. As soon as they are caught by those GTP cars, then they'll suddenly find openings as everybody tries to sneak through. Let's take a look and see if we could uh, try and break down what happened to the 27 car here. Yeah, I'm coming round, and it looks like he's just gone a little bit too wide there. Just comes back on, and there's a little rump on at the curbing. That car's starting to bounce a bit. Suspension saying no. Hard to control the car there, and it looks like a light hit into the tire barrier. But with that speed, he had to slow down from it. It is going to cause quite a bit of damage on the side of that car. Uh, good on him for getting on the brakes, because he was about to slide back into traffic there, and thankfully did not get in front of anybody uh, as he got it woed up in the grass. Uh, Valenteus, man. Uh, already up three positions at the start of this race. Like we said, very tough to pass here. Make that four as he manages to sneak beneath Shink. Yeah, I do love the sticker bomb livery. You usually see him in the GTPs. He's in the GTO today. And one of the things you get with that GTPs, I've mentioned before, how confident he is in the braking when he overtakes a GTO when he's in a car with downforce. Now, I reckon some of that, that trust worthiness he's got in the car that allowed him to make that move there on francois shrink and i think that is what's helping him at the moment just that ability to know the limits of the car and the braking is really helping him at the moment As you see timothy reed he's a couple corners away from hitting the traffic so i reckon next lap we're going to start to see both classes mix together here they've already spread apart pretty well so uh, it looks like they're going to have a nice gentle ease into the back of that field before it starts to thicken up but that doesn't make it uh, uh, any nicer for them i'm sure meanwhile valenteus here uh, catching up to moss or at least trying to keep up with moss who's now gained six positions managing to get by audrius at some point along this run forward uh, they've also got schuster is the next one in line in front of them along with the regular of doug cloud so it's just really working out where to make the move now. And you see more locking up there from some of the drivers. That was Doug Cloud making the lock up there. And it's just now a case of where do you want to go? Does Valentin just want to get past Mass as we're on board with him as he tries to ponder in that head of his, what's the best opportunity? Or does he follow Alex through when he's making the moves? It's very tough to see what the right option is here. And in fact, you can just see he's not going to try and force it. I think he realizes Alex is in the same situation. They both have that speed, but a wider line here, trying to get on the throttle, not working out for him. It was also kind of intriguing, the, the difference in lines coming down through the carousel between all of them. So everybody kind of took their own route, but they all worked out coming off the corner as Schuster is still being under threat by Moss coming through the S's, getting very, very close. In fact, he gets a very good run coming off of turn 10, down to 11. Andreas gonna try and defend, sneaking it way up in the inside, locking up the brakes as he tries to woe it up. And thankfully for Alex, Andreas was heads up and he gave him the space, but that was a very failed attempt. That's the second time in two laps that Alex has done that. He locked up last lap as well, and it is proving bad for him. Now, GTPs are in the traffic, and this is Ator Sintez Galindo. He's trying to make some positions up today. It's not working for him. Back with Timothy Reed. Just look as he goes over the hill, how he gets a little bit of clear air as Brendan Lynn goes off in the distance. We'll see that later. And he's just waiting to get on the throttle there. And it's so tough at the exit of, of turn three. That was Shink that we saw. And man, that is that is such a good illustration of the difference between these two cars here, Craig, because you could see the, the Audis with the four wheel drive just plowing over the curbs. And yet these GTPs, you kind of don't want to do that. No, you don't want to do that. And also the closing distance as well. He almost couldn't see that GTO before he got there. And then it was a little bit too late. It had to get off the throttle, not on the brakes, just off the throttle, was able to hold on here. Now, this is the S's I was talking about, Joe. Can he make a move safely here? He does indeed. Van der Sant's right behind him as well. If he gets a hold up here by one GTO, he's going to be in trouble. And in fact, it's Van der Sant in the background that makes the mistake. 
fact, he was four wheels off through turn 10 there. And for some reason, Van Sant is the one saying sorry over the chat. Uh, I don't know why he felt the need for that, uh, but uh, that has slowed him up tremendously on board with Reed still as we fly through the last of them, I think. Yeah, that is up to the front. So they are free once again, but it went much better for Reed that first time through. Definitely went better for Reed and it's not gone any different for these drivers. Laos making a move here. You've got a four car battle here for the end of the podium. Olsen, Hiroda, Jungloff and Sintes Galindo all trying to go through. They've got the last five GTOs and just look at the squeeze as Hiroda tries to get past Noka without causing any issues. And that's going to hold up Noka though as Sintes Galindo and Jungloff get by. So clearly willing to take some risks here at Laos Olsen has been around this series a lot, although he's been taking breaks here and there. Glad to see him return once again. He's going to be able to sneak by our leader. But, oh, I thought his rival might. Heroder thought he could too, but he instead made a little contact with Sliumba. He made a little contact. In fact, he almost going a bit too hot there. Something bad could have happened. And that's the second time that one of these drivers has tried to follow another one through. And it's all right if you're in a corner. As Javier Del Omo is now out with no nose. It's all right in a corner if you've got the speed. It's not all right there if he's unable to. But look at this right now with Seamus Power in a battle with Jack Wells and Yuna Holmer. This is a traffic jam here. It is rush hour this first time through. We still have to do this about uh, three more times after this, if their pace is any indication here. The first quarter of the race gone by as uh, ooh, slowed up there. Sheamus power. I thought maybe he was going to get overtaken by Hanma. Oh, did he actually get into the back of Sliumba as well there? I don't think so. I didn't see any contact, but he got bookmarked there by Sliumba there. He could not get past and look at that difference just on that one corner. He's already lost half a second to Jack Wells, and that's going to cost him as well. And there's more drivers still going through traffic because this is Noel Lundberg in the GTO. And just look what he has to deal with, with GTPs running around him left, right, and thankfully not center. Yeah, <laughs> that's the last place that you want it. But uh, also, I, I can report that little incident that we saw with Del Omo, that involved Schuster, a little bit of a hip check to the side that spun the prototype around, trying to see if he can sneak underneath. Now, Lundberg going for a move, but no dice on Friesen. He'll retain that second spot. Yeah, and to be fair, this is the opportunity where if you actually are in the right place for the GTPs to get around you, these GTOs can look to make a move and make an opportunity. It's not worked out for Lundberg. It's worked out well for Friesen. He can hold on to this, but already they are two seconds behind. So Lundberg, who has now got a lot of free space, more locking up there. I didn't see who it was, but I know Friesen and Lundberg have both locked up in that final corner already half of these laps in the race. Hopefully they don't overcook that uh, right front. So something happened with uh, Alex Mass here. Let's see if we can find out what's going on. This is down into turn 10. As almost looked like he was going to get shoved off to the side. That's still, oh, no, he gets shoved from behind. He tries to save it, uses the four-wheel drive, and unfortunately can't do a nice little drift through the corner. He comes to a halt. He'll get running, but that's many positions lost. Lots of positions lost, but he's still plus five for the day. However, he's now four seconds behind the next car, which happens to be Andreas Schuster. So unfortunately, he's going to have to do it all over again. And it's two steps up, three steps down for him as Timothy Reed gets the better of the other GTP drivers in the round of traffic. He's got a two second lead over Van der Sand. And Van der Sand's got almost a seven second lead over Laos Olsen. I, and I'm, in fact, I think when we cut to Timothy here, I swear I saw Van der Sand brush the wall on the exit of the hairpin. I, I'm pretty certain uh, that uh, he at least, at least made a little contact. Now, it doesn't look like there's damage on that left hand side. Yeah, it looks pretty clean to me. So uh, maybe he got away with it. I did have a quick look. I did see a, I did see a spark of dust or something. So maybe on the replay he hit it, but it also looked like he was not in control of that car on throttle. The tail was just going a little bit sideways there. And I reckon maybe he did get a very light scrape. Maybe just got rid of some of the paint and put some of that lovely purple and black 
on the wall there, on the pit wall. Yeah. <laughs> well, he'll uh, see if he can put some more paint down maybe after he's done racing, because for now, they should stay white walls as Brennan Lim is the one fighting back here towards the back of the pack, trying to catch up to Victor Rodriguez, while at the same time, he's got Carlos Fonseca closing in behind. Not been a good day for Brendan, already eight positions down. He's looking to find opportunities, and there's not a lot at the moment. The gaps are a bit too big. Dirty air as well affecting him through these S's as he tries to catch up to Victor Rodriguez. No damage though, so he does, still has that speed, but look at the braking distance. That is the difference of somebody with a little bit more confidence in the brakes and the ability to slow down. Remember, you've still got to blip the throttle when you're downshifting in these GTPs, and I reckon that just helped him out there. Got another replay. Uh, sounds like something's happened to Elkins. So this is the Texas driver coming down through the carousel and unfortunately running out of racetrack. Uh oh, he's going back to the inside. There's a hill there, but he doesn't climb it and uh, just has a heck of a time with it, decides to pull it to a halt. I think he has since exited the race. So Brandon, one of our first DNFs along with Javier Del Olmo. Yeah, Javier Del Olmo, one of the, the first GTP retirement of the day. It's not been a good season for him as we just have a quick look there. Carlos Fonseca and back to the leaders of the GTOs. So Lumber, he has a second and a half lead. And I'm wondering what's it going to take to make the mistake. I'm not asking for it. I'm knocking on wood. He doesn't make a mistake. And you can see he will go wide. That is something you don't want to do, especially around the carousel, is to go wide. He's just hoping for an opportunity. And I'm looking where the GTP traffic are. They're just starting their second uh, attempt around the GTO. And they're still bunched up, John. Yeah, there's there's no place to hide at this track, I'm pretty certain. Uh, so it, it's always going to be a mess, especially this time through. It's starting to become, I'm sure, a bit of a conveyor belt uh, as the GTOs start to spread out. Now, Sliumba, an uh, interesting note about him uh, uh, as we, we cut away there, 30.0, his fastest lap. Valenteus, 29.6, and that's with Audrius having to deal with all that traffic, too. So. It, there's still a shot that he could try and catch up to the lead as we watch on Hiroda versus Olsen for the last step on the podium. Oh, you could just see that Olsen had to just not get full throttle there as the GTO was just in his way. Now he's going to try and go around. That's a tight way through turn eight to make it d stick. He managed to get it dinned Laos Olsen and Justin Hiroda. He's got a problem. Any more holdups here and he's got Jungbluff and Sinted Glendo behind him. All right, but look at everyone going. This looks like a move that Sinted Glinda will look for. No, Jungbluff goes for the defense. But just that moment in the S's can just lose you some positions if you're not careful. And now they've got to go up the hill with these GTOs. Yeah, Ator is approaching them fast. He's usually much better in the race than his qualifying. He's uh, already up two positions right now, which is much better than those in front of him. The only driver who's gained in front of him is Laos Dolson, and that's a mere one position. So Ator Sintes Galindo looking a little bit stronger in comparison as he starts to size them up. That was a little wide up ahead by Laust Olsen, and he gets balked. He's going to allow his rival through. Almost does another squeaking by. Somehow, Ator Sintes Galindo avoids the wreck, but Olsen and Schink wind up in the tires. Yeah, that was not what any driver wanted there. You can see, I think Fabian got on the radio and apologized. He wasn't looking for it. He knew that Laos had a mistake there. Wouldn't be surprised if Laos also misshifted in having that panic of having to get on the brakes quickly for that GTO. It's such a shame what's happened to him. He has retired the car already and his season of bad luck once again just gets worse. So we're watching Brito now. This is chasing behind Hanma in the number 21 as uh, he's been, he's running what is traditionally run by Kurt Clapper out here, but we're gonna check back in with Gaudin as things get a little hectic once again. The 25 is stuck behind, coming down into the hairpin as the Silk Cut Jaguar is just diving it in there. Brennan Lim is, is holding no bars. No bars as well. I can also report that Sintet Galindo has damage after being rear-ended by a GTO, but we'll keep this battle going on. Can Golden look for a move? He can't. 
as they just come for a little bit of a breather here. I think we got time for a quick replay as oh, Golden almost goes over the hill. Is there going to be a send hit? No. Yeah, I thought he was going to lose it. I, I think we have a replay spooled up. So before this erupts once again, let's take a, a quick glance here at what happened with Olsen. Now he gets held up right here. And that's a good call, I think, on missing a shift. That could so easily be done in the heat of the moment. Uh, went down. And I don't blame him for moving off to the left-hand side. I think that was just everything happening at once. And unfortunately, two cars tried to occupy the same space. It's unfortunately one of those things when you're trying to get out of a wreck as well, trying to avoid others, that just happens. And we talk about how a wreck of two cars can turn into a wreck of four cars sometimes. That just shows it as Lumberg trying to get through more tapping of the wall by a driver. I would be surprised if that was Sintez Galindo again. Remember, he does have a little bit of damage on that rear now. But we're looking at Noel Lumberg as he continues up. He's trying to get up to Nicky Friesen. The traffic's not helping him at the moment. He needs a little bit of help, and it's not going to happen up this hill. Oh, and I think we had another wreck for Gaudin. He got uh, run into by Roper, and I think, uh, unfortunately, Brandon Lim got involved in that one uh, along with Buchanan. So multiple drivers just unfortunately getting a bit of damage and being slowed up once again. This has not been the race of Zach Buchanan, who's still staying aggressive, not shying away despite running into a couple cars as he's going to catch up to Brendan Lim, who is missing the nose of that machine. Yeah, Brendan Lim is missing that nose. It's going to be interesting to see what downforce and what speed he's Whoa. going to throw. The middle goes Zachary. Oh, that was a bit brave, but I think he realized he could not lift off that throttle because he would have had Roper right behind him making that move. He had to commit to that and thankfully everybody saw what was happening. Yeah, I, it's a good thing that Doug Cloud has that headband to keep the sweat out of his brow because certainly he would have been doing a lot right there. Meanwhile, Zach Buchanan on the charge up to 12th now. Yeah, Buchanan looking to hold off here. He does have a spinning car. Two spinning GTPs up ahead, and that's not a good time to rejoin Honma, one of them. I'm not sure who the other one is. It's Proteo. It is indeed. Both of them going to fall a couple positions as Lim comes into the pits to try and repair his car, see if he can get a new nose clip put on. Meanwhile, Moss, who we saw drop some positions, has caught up to Doug Cloud. Already had a scary moment last time. Let's see if he gets more excitement here. It's almost tapping the back of Doug Cloud. And this is the difference as well. Drivers taking different lines, taking different speed through these corners. Remember, raised curves, a little bit of blind in some of these corners as well as you're going over the hill. Think port of mouth on modern day race. Race, racing, uh, just to think of that little crest that you get, that's what you get around the top of Sonoma. Is he looking to make a move? He isn't at the moment, but again, what, as Joe brought up earlier, different lines around here. Alex decided to hug the whole inside of turn six there. Doug decided to try and go around the outside and diamond it off. Who gets the better run? I think it's Doug. Alex is not going to make a move here. That's going to be very late, and it's almost going to come to spoils than it is. Oh, Doug goes around. He'll have to let him through. Alex runs along his way. I'm sure he's going to be disappointed on that one, but at least he only loses that one spot, and he's able to get the car going. Oh, this has been a hot spot of action down here. Hanma now in it as he has a little bit of over under there with A.J. Roper, who takes the position right back. Sliomba, our leader, needs to give them a wide berth. Thankfully, he does, and they sneak through. Thankfully, the words, I'll go wide, also applies, you go wide, on the back of Salumba's car, and that helps him. And now Honma looking to try and find any move he can. He nets zero. Roper plus two today, but it's so tough at the top of this hill to make a move. Down the hill is like a roller coaster. Can't find it yet, and it wouldn't surprise me, Joe. I think he's running a little bit more downforce. There is damage on the back of Roper's car on the wing. I don't think Homer's going to be able to over overpower him, though, on this drag straight. We'll see. He's looking for it coming down into turn seven, but nothing doing that time through as they try to open up the second apex. Good run there from AJ Roper, another of those drivers that's starting to become a regular in multiple of our vintage series here on GSRC as the Japanese driver still stays with him. Ahead of them, worth mentioning, Victor Rodriguez 
kind of been on his lonesome, but he's up eight positions. And usually when I say eight positions, well, he didn't qualify. No, he qualified this time. Really good driving for Rodriguez, a name we don't see a lot and starting to see more names we're starting to see after the boom of the Road America 500. You've just got to see that they are working their way. And this is the classic name, if you know, HL Sinted Galindo. We've mentioned it. He's better in the race than he is in qualifying. He's plus four. The only cars ahead of him are guys that have not changed positions. And Dustin Hiroda is the car in front. And I won't be surprised if Dustin gets held up at the assets here by a GTO. This could bring Sintez Galindo into this battle for third place. Yeah, last lap was just a hair quicker for Ator. But he's not going to get as much as I think he would have wanted through that. Dustin did magnificently dealing with that traffic through the S's way wide. There's not banking there, so I don't. Uh, it won't help you to go wide unless you can really dime it off the corner. So Ator must have just missed his braking. You know, it makes you think, being that this is used by NASCAR nowadays, mostly, I, I know GT America comes here. You'd think that they would have put some sort of banking there just to make the NASCAR, uh, NASCAR drivers feel a little bit at home, but nope. It's been flat for all these years, and they will keep it flattered. Here we go with a little bit of bookmarking. And Sintet Galindo is going to be held up behind Pollock. And if he doesn't get through here at turn five, he has to do it around the outside. That's going to cost him a couple temps. But he's going to get it back here as Hirota is going to get held up by Skogard. Ooh. In fact, he's held up completely. This is going to be an overtake. Around the outside, going on either side of Skogard. He's got the desired line down into the hairpin, but he's a little timid on the brakes compared to Dustin. Now he tries to outgun him off the corner. No, Dustin once again getting that nose ahead. He's going to chop him off into the S's. It was a valiant try, though. Valiant try and great racing from Hirota to use that inside. Is there going to be a response at turn 11 by Sintet Galindo? He's a bit too far behind. That dirty air is costing him. He's going to put a bait in there, and later on the brakes, he catches up and a mistake from Hiroda. This is going to allow Sintet Galindo to get right back in there again. Looking at the traffic, they may hit another GTO coming around the same place they did before. And this is Schuster this time. He's already been run into at least once that we've seen by some of the traffic. Let's see if he gives them a, a wide berth himself. Uh, and then it's Doug Cloud up in front of them. So they got one after another. This holds up. Heroder, but not in a spot where it looks like uh, where it looks like Ator is able to capitalize. He'll have to wait once again down through turn five. Doug Cloud stays off to the right hand side. A peek down into the carousel from Sintez Galindo, but nothing happening. Nothing happening, and now it's going to be a clear shot down the drag straight and a quick left here off. And is Ator going to try a late break again? We've seen it not work before with Alex Mass. And this time, the right line there for Ator. But it also looks like that wider line. Dustin is really using that. You don't talk about that wide line at seven a lot. Not in these downforce cars. In a, in a box car like a GTO, you expect it. But for Ator, that narrow line is not working for him. Just one more here of them going by Alex Moss before they got a 10 second break, at least in terms of those GTOs uh, before they get to the next one. Check it out, Mickey Friesen though in the meantime. He's been holding on to that second place, but Noel Lundberg has been making him work for it. Uh, just haven't seen any change for that P2 quite yet. No, in fact, all, all six drivers in the top three of both classes have yet to change positions today. And realistically, it is just safe driving that a lot of these GTOs have been doing. That's not a knock saying safe driving. They just know that there's no point trying to make risky moves. We saw what happened with Alex Mass on Doug there, a little bit of a late send. It's tough to do that here. Even with this run here on the drag strip, you cannot outbreak there. More smoke. I believe that was Salumba. These top front two have been lighting up those tires so much. I think we need to ask the Vatican if a Pope's been elected. <laughs> well, uh, unfortunately for Sliumba, he's been steadily caught here. It seems like Friesen maybe picking it up a bit, taking care of those tires better late in the race. What about AJ Roper? Uh, I don't think he needs to try and save anything because he's got to be on the attack. What feel, felt like almost constantly Ooh, in front of them, speaking of which, is Hanma going to try and make a move? Sentez Galindo's going to try. He's going to see if he can get himself into the podium positions. 
doesn't this time, but man, he is starting to lay that pressure on lap after lap now. And that was all caused by a little move in turn 10 before the hairpin, where Van Hicks and Valentagius had a little bit of a moment there, and uh, Hiroda had to get on the brake. A misshift or a mistake there from Hiroda, and now they're side by side in a very tricky situation. Sintet Galindo has the inside. If you can outbreak here to get a move, and you could see Dustin really wanted to get in there, and that's real good driving there using Noel Lomberg as a pick there by Sintet Galindo. That is veteran presence there from Ator. Wonderful stuff. He knew there was enough of a gap, and once that car was there, that was it. What about Jungbluth now? He's caught up to them because of all the battling that they've had side by side. Could you demote Dustin another? Not this corner, at least. No, not this corner. Can he do it? No, he's had a bit of a slow exit of the final part of turn seven, and it's back to Hiroda and Sintez Galindo, and they have a lot of free space. They have half a lap before they hit some GTO traffic. So they've got clear air and a clean track in front of them. So now it's just battle of wits and the drivers in the front there. It's gonna be very tight and very interesting to see who gets a better run. Especially remember, Sintens Galindo has touched that wall a bit too many times, Joe. I wonder if he does have some small damage. Also behind them, I noticed a change for fourth in the GTOs. That's Valenteus getting by Van Hixey. That means he is now within what looks to be about five seconds of the overall lead. He has just dominated this field, even though he didn't start at the front. Yeah, I think he's just doing it just to have his own challenge here. And when you're almost 9K, you've been 9K numerous times. You've got to just freshen things up and he likes to challenge. He is now just waiting. What, he's five seconds behind. There's 10 and a half minutes left. He's lapping almost a second faster than the other drivers. It's possible, but he's going to need a little bit of luck and a little bit of help from those GTPs, I reckon. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to catch up to those front runners from here, but I think he's got the pace. Dustin still wanting that podium position back, but he's got to be careful if he makes a false move on Sintes Galindo. Jungbluth will be happy to try and pick the spot off of him. 10 minutes to go. Final quarter of this race now as they fly down into the last hairpin. And it doesn't look like Jungbluth is going to be close enough. He tries to square it off, though. Yeah, tries to square it off. But I reckon that Dirty Air is starting to play a bit of havoc there. He hasn't been in Dirty Air for most of this race with Van der Sand and Reed pulling ahead of these guys. So I reckon this is one of the first times he has. That is Honma, though, gone off. I don't know what's happened there could be another moment there just getting a bit too happy on the throttle coming out of turn seven losing some positions though as this battle continues to heat up i think that's exactly what happened to hanma unfortunately coming out of turn seven but uh, mickey freezing down to three tenths of a second wonder if he's being urged on by the presence of valenteus now getting ever closer to him knowing that if he's got the speed he's got to try and go for this win now and get some distance between himself and audrius Friesen coming down the hill into turn five. Sliumba just tantalizingly close at this stage. It's close, but also since we last talked about Valentagius, he gained a second, and that is crucial. And again, look at the different lines here as we come through. We've got a replay here. I believe it was uh, Van der Sand. We'll just have a quick look at what's happening. No, Sam Skogard, sorry, he comes through. This is the S's we were talking about. Don't want to be too tight. Oh, oh I mean, that was our leader. Yeah, where did Timothy Reed have to go, though? That was a very unconventional live from Skogard. Well, he'll be keeping tab of that one. He'll remember that next time he goes by. I looked on the stats, by the way. Friesen, uh, despite having started to show up more and more in this series, he's not amongst the 39 drivers who've taken wins here in IMSA Vintage. So he could be getting a maiden victory if he can get by Sliumba. That's if he can get by Salumba and if Valentasia doesn't catch up to them. There's a lot of ifs coming out here today, Joe. There is still a lot to play for with eight minutes left, especially these battles as Fabian Jungler tries his way to try and get past Dustin Hiroda. And you've got to think that if he gets past him, he can catch up to Sinted Galindo. And that's not a knock at Hiroda. It's just that Fabian, he's really licking his lips right now. Don't know if we've mentioned it, but Van de Sant and Reed have really stretched away from everybody else. It's 13 seconds from P2 to P3. So fantastic job there. Back to Schuster. 
as he's still got more problems coming in behind him into the hairpin. Uh, that is uh, the likes of, uh, actually, no, that's Doug Cloud in front of him. Excuse me. So I wonder if Doug just got by him. It looks it as well. And then, of course, they've got Van der Sant, which had to slow down there, which isn't going to affect him too much as he's a bit too far away from Timothy Reed. As we're going to have a, another look of a replay here on the GSRC replay. And this is Carlos Fonseca just coming down. And this looks to be turn four a bit too hot. Now, he caught the back there, I oh. believe. That was Youngblood. And that was Honmer, I believe, as well. That may have been where he got some damage, and that might have caused him to lose the car a bit. Yeah, Hanma kind of finishing the job, but uh, definitely made a little bit of a touch to the rear bumper of that GTO. Back to Schuster now, just behind Doug Cloud. Cloud holding him off down into turn seven, but he's got to also keep him behind for six and a half more minutes, and it looks like speed is in the favor of Andreas. Speed is there for Andreas, but again, just want to make sure you don't overcommit through these S's in these cars. You don't want to have the oversteer onto the gravel or onto that race curb, and I think that just held him off there. We did see one of these cars, though, in Lumber, getting a little bit of a tap there from Fonseca. Valentagius is up to him. He needs to get by ASAP with six minutes to go. He's four seconds behind the leaders. He needs to get past this very quickly. He's not getting it done here. I think it's going to have to be out of the carousel here at turn six, and he needs to get it done by turn seven. Coming down through this long left-hander. Bloomberg's probably thinking to himself, come on, this guy starts from the back, and already I'm at under threat to lose this podium position. Thinks about it, but it looks like Valenteus won't go for it there. Behind them, they've got the leader, Timothy Reed, rocking up to their rear bumpers and catching them in the S's. See, so he's got to be careful. Uh, Timothy doesn't have the biggest of gaps over Van de Sant, so he's got to try and make sure that he gets through without losing too much time, and there he goes. Didn't have the biggest of gaps, but he also realized the situation. He did not want to try and interrupt anything there. But again, Valentagius, he's not finding a way through. And this is quite interesting because Lombo's a quick driver, but he's not Valentagius' pace. And if he wants to try and catch up to the leaders, yes, they're three and a half seconds, four seconds ahead of him, but he's not going to have the time. They're starting their 24th lap. There's going to be probably three laps left for these GTOs. That's a lot of ask for Valentagius to catch up to Friesen and Salumba and then try and make the move. Yeah, it might be just a bit too far at this stage. If he passes him right now, he might get up to the back of him by the very end of the race. But, oh, well, speaking of trying it right now, there he goes down the inside of turn four. Not done yet, though. This is going to switch back in favor of Noel down through the carousel unless Valentagius can get laid on the brakes, and that's what he's done. He's got laid on the brakes. It means he can get on the throttle, and you just saw great camera work there. You just saw that uh, Lundberg, he wanted to get on the throttle earlier, realized getting too early meant he had to slow down. He had to tap the brakes a couple of times through the carousel, and Valentagius is going to get that position done. He had to fight it, though. It's going to be a tall order now. He's on the podium. Maybe he's in contention a second. I cannot see him getting a chance of the win now, but the track is pretty clear ahead of him. Yeah, it's going to take a Herculean effort for sure from Valenteus to get up there. Three and a half seconds with just about three and a half minutes left to go. AJ Roper and oh, he goes wide down to the carousel. Zach Buchanan going to take that spot away. Yeah, there is damage on the back of Roper's car. Unfortunately, the wing is pushed up a little bit, so he's going to be struggling. But we also know there's damage to the side of Buchanan's car, so that's a little bit of an injured battle, but he's doing his best. And Roper, he is plus two on the day, but it's not the race they were expecting. But with this small field, Joe, a strength of field of even 4,000 in the GTPs, it's still been a very competitive field, and it's so tough to make moves. Indeed, uh, it's it certainly brought out some of the, uh, the, the very quick heads out here. And AJ Roper still trying to hold on. Like you said, not the race I think he would have been hoping for, but this is definitely a guy I can attest that has fun out here uh, and just enjoys getting a good race in. Andreas Sliumba 
He started this one on the pole in the GTOs. Is he going to stay there, though? He just went wide. Friesen sees one of his best chances. He manages to get side by side, but he can't get the throttle down. Is that his best opportunity slipping through his fingers? I don't think so, because we saw a lock up there from Salumba. That front right is going to be very hot. The track has not changed temperature, so that's not a problem, but it's still warm. He has to slow down a little bit for Jack Wells. This is not an overtaking spot for Friesen, but now the pressure's on. And again, more lockups by Salumba. This is not going to do that front right any help. We know Friesen's locked up a few times, Joe, but he's keeping it safe at the moment. This is not working out well. Andreas is going to have to try and manage this race. He just needs to get clean lines for the remainder of it. I think two more laps for him to try and complete this one because the pace, or not the pace car, the leader uh, should be coming around for the white flag uh, in about half a lap's time right now. So they'll follow him home uh, once he takes that one and get around to that one to go signal. This is all about 2.3 seconds ahead of Valentin. So he is reeling them in, but it's too little, too late. I don't know, Joe, because if we have a moment like that again with Salimba and Friesen, I reckon we could see that because if they have to go squabbling, that could slow them down and that could bring Valentagus in. Never say never in motorsport. And I saw more smoke on the front right of Salimba there. He's really trying to slow that car down and it's helping him. But how long can he do that? It's going to be a challenge. I'm not saying the tire will burst, but just think the harder that tire gets, the less grip he gets. And on a track with a lot of right-handers and slow right-handers, that could cost him. White flag is out. Also, Vanessant had a mistake a couple laps ago, fell down by a couple seconds, and Sintes Galinda closes in, but it's not enough, I think, to take that second place as we watch Noker not giving up on his coming down into the hairpin he'll get the white flag now as well yep and also the leaders of the gto's will get the white flags all these drivers now know that they're on their final lap as the leader of the gtp timothy reed he's just got a few more corners left to go can no cut look for a last gas move here on van hicksy it would be really good in what i believe i'm gonna have to check i think this might be one of his first races on the broadcast We'll wait and see, but he's having a real good squabble here with Van Hixie. There were a lot of drivers seeking redemption after Road America. Timothy Reed, definitely one of them. He's going to make up for it today, taking a win here in California. Flag to flag for Timothy Reed with no problems. And Van der Sant will also take it flag to flag in second. He gets that second place as well. A very convincing second place. And I believe a Sinted Galinda will come by. The GTO battle, Joe, has still freezing, unfortunately, getting caught out by some traffic at turn four. It's going to cost them as Sinted Galindo comes home in third for the GTPs. A nice podium from Ator. Like we said, he races way better than he qualifies, and he always seems to prove it time and again as Liumba pulls himself some comfort zone between himself and the number 20 car. All he has to do is make it through this hairpin and get the shifts right coming out. He locks it up one last time for good measure. Don't need those tires anymore as Leomba is going to win here in the GTOs at Sonoma. And then you'll see Friesen and Valentagius coming up behind. You could ask the questions of what if for Valentagius, but it's very tough to see it. Who's going to make the first dive? Valentagius is going to go for a bit of a fly there, but there goes Salumba as he goes for the custom GTO drift. All right. Yeah, Valentagius definitely had fun there. Uh, just uh, jumping it, ramping it over the leap at turn two. Valentius gap at the end, seven tenths behind Friesen. He did get close. I think one lap difference is if he had made that pass one lap earlier, he may have actually caught second and could have tried to make a pass on the last lap. That'll take us to a quick break. We'll come back with the unofficial results as well as driver interview. So stick around.
Welcome back to Sonoma here for round six of the IMSA Vintage Series. Timothy Reed is going to be able to go from lights to flag to take the win over Alex Van de Sant. And it looked closer than it was going to at the start as Alex kept him company, but then started to fall, fall off, came home second in the end. Eight Tour Sintas Galindo, though, fought hard going from eighth to third today with Dustin Heroder claiming that's one of the best races he's ever had, despite him losing out on that podium and finishing fourth. Fabian Jungluth was P5 with Jack Wells in a bit of a quiet six behind him. Seamus Power in P7 was followed by Victor Rodriguez, a gain of nine today. And yet he wasn't our hardest charger, though he was for those who qualified. Martin Kratrick was ninth as Zach Buchanan rounds out your top 10. Then you get into drivers that wound up in a few scuffles. Alan Berto wound up in 11th. AJ Roper was P12 and Junior Hanma wound up in 13th, last one on the lead lap. Brendan Lim had to take repairs. He eventually got back out on circuit, finished 14th. Fonseca was 15th, and then the DNFs was Gaudin, Olsen, and Del Omo. What about our GTO field here, Craig? Well, in the GTOs, it's uh, Andreas Salumba. He went like to flags as well, winning the race with Mickey Friesen right behind him. It was a t close battle at the end between those two. And then Valentagius, 10 places made up, starting third from last to third position, but just missed out there. And look how close it was. Noel Lumberg will be fourth with Van Hixey in fifth, with Robert Noka finishing sixth, and Alex Mass making seven places up to finish seventh, with Doug Cloud eighth. Andreas Schuster will be ninth, and Forbin Pollock will be tenth. 
quickly to the final five and you see uh, Hector Suarez will be 11th and then the retirees with Sam Skogard did see six laps down Ian Johnson finished 14th Francois Sh uh, Schink also finished 17 laps and Brandon Elkins didn't see that one but finished 23 laps down that's going to take us to our winner in the GTPs Timothy Reed who, as I mentioned, uh, needed a bit of redemption from Road America. Tim, it, it's not the the big race, but you come back after that one and you lead it from the pole to the win. That's got to feel good. Yeah, yeah, it feels good, actually. Uh, kind of have the pace again and uh, not screw up so much. Um, had, had a couple issues, um, but uh, yeah, it was, it was a good race. Just kind of keeping you know my, my head in the game and... You know, try not to spin the tires, which is super easy to do with this track, and and take care. Um, so yeah, it worked out. Now it surprised us because we were admittedly a bit doom and gloom behind the scenes coming into this. Sonoma and, and the IMSA vintage cars tends to be a bit messy, and yet we wound up with a real cracker of a race. Did it feel pretty good from from down on the surface? Yeah, it, it's super interesting. Single split and like, you know, the Nissans was like 4,000 SOF um, and like everyone, you know, going through the the roster there and everyone's experienced in the car they're driving. So it was it was, it was kind of like a top split in a non split race. Um, so it's really interesting like that. And honestly, like when when we have like experienced drivers in, in both vehicles, it's just an amazing race because like the communications uh, is, is great. Everyone knows what each other are doing. And yeah, we, we avoid a lot of the uh, multi-class issues. And yeah, like the Audis today were excellent. Um, you know, there's, I had one miscommunication with Sam, which I super apologize for. Um, I'm not sure if you caught that on the broadcast, but uh, he took a, a little bit different line than I was used to seeing the other Audis, which is fine. Everyone has their own line, and I kind of went a little earlier to pass him and, and kind of ruined his race. So um, I know that happened. Um, but yeah, I think uh, it, it seemed like a lot of, um, not, not too many DNFs that it seemed like, so it seemed like a good race. And I know Ator and Dustin had a, had a really good race too. So yeah, um, it, it's, a, it's a good weekend for the IMSA Vintage community for sure. I'm afraid to say we did catch a replay of that incident, <laughs> but uh, next week, definitely going to be a bigger challenge. How's your chops at the ring? Uh, I think that's going to be a pass for me. Like <laughs> it's, I'm kind of, it, it's one of those tracks, like it's super intense, but I lose focus after like a lap and a half. And so I, I usually just, yeah, I'm going to try some other things. Probably I may show up uh, Saturday in the Audi, but uh just to give that a shot. But yeah, it, it's kind of a past week for me. <laughs> I understand. Uh, well, congratulations regardless on victory today, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. That was Timothy Reed coming home with the win. And the other winner tonight uh, was our driver, Andreas Salumba in the GTOs. Craig's caught up with him. Yep, uh, got Salumba with me today. And it looked like, Andreas, that at the end of the race, it was getting a little bit squeaky bum time, as they say. That looked a little bit closer than I think you wanted it to be. I uh, didn't really want uh, want that to be that close. But in the end, uh, I mean, on Wednesday's race, I saw that, you know, towards the end of the race, the Audi just chews up the front tires like nothing I've ever seen before in my life. <laughs> So, yeah, just try to do some changes to the setup, nothing major, to see if I could get the tires to survive a little bit better for today's race. And it turned out to, like, not work out exactly as I intended it to. So, yeah, towards the race, I really had issues with, like, my front being completely just not there. So, I was, yeah, I, I was definitely... Uh being a little bit stressed out by the fact that there was uh, Mickey right there in my mirrors and uh, any sort of mistake that I make is going to just see him whiz past. Uh, on top of that, we had Valenteus there. Uh, he was just coming up at a rate of knots. I was just really, really just ha having, having my head down, praying for the, for the white flag to be out and not mess anything up on the last lap, and it worked out. It was great. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. If we had a drinking contest in that final 15 minutes, Every time we saw a lock up by you on your front right, I think we may need to not drive because we saw a <laughs> lot of locking up there at the end. It's one of those, but it was a race that was quite interesting because like we were saying to Timothy, we weren't coming in with a lot of high hopes, but it turned to be out to be a really competitive battle out there as well with a bunch of you guys in the GTOs early. And then the traffic came along. So how did 
the traffic. How did that go for you, having those GTPs come whistling past you around um, some very tight places? Yeah, definitely had some moments of inventing in insults to people. So it's a very nice thing I wasn't streaming anything because, yeah, definitely had a little bit of a case of uh, Apex nabbing from some of the Nissans. But looking at the relative, they were all really racing their own, uh, you know, really close, really intense race. So, like, I can't really, uh, I don't know, fault them for it, you know, because I would probably be doing exactly the same thing, just trying to find any piece of track that I can put my car into to just get any sort of advantage. So basically, yeah, every every round of traffic we had, it was just basically trying to survive it, not get into a, into a, into the way of anyone uh, that would result in people getting taken out. There was a moment in, in the last hairpin that uh, two Nissans collided and I just had to sort of try and take some extremely wide line <laughs> in order to avoid that. But overall, it was Classic Camel, actually, classic in, in, in IMSA Vintage, where you just, uh, it's, it's, it starts intense and just kind of keeps, keeps going there until the very finish of the race. It goes from zero to a hundred and just stays around a hundred, definitely. So you can get a bit of a break now and next week it's the big one. It's the one that everyone's got circled. It is the Norch Life. I don't think you'll be looking at the tires a lot around there, but the question is, will you? Will be seeing you will we expect to see you next week if i got my words out right next week will we expect to see you absolutely yeah um i'm going to do my best to try and not miss that one because uh yeah if there's if there's the norch life somewhere in any of the in, uh, rounds of the of any season i usually try to make it a point to arrive there and uh, see what i can do there Andreas Salumba, who is, like a lot of people, a Norge Slife Hunter. P1 today for Andreas. Thank you very much. We'll hand you back to Joe, who I believe may have one more interview. I think Ator Sintez Galindo, he might be standing beside. Indeed, a driver that uh, continues to impress us no matter how many times we watch uh, Ator. It's funny, we even mentioned at the start of the race that you tend to race better than you qualify. And what do you know? You climb all the way up to a podium today. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, today was the drive of my life. I, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I was using every trick in the book, using the traffic, every every corner, every every apex that were I had to fight uh, very very hard with Dustin, but also cleanly. Uh, I'm so so happy with the with the result actually. And yeah, podium finish, lots of points for for the championship. Uh, yeah, good day in the office today. A very good day for you, obviously, but uh, it you had a, quite a fight with Dustin there. He came on the radio after we heard and, and said that was the uh, one of the best battles he's ever had here in, in IMSA Vintage. Uh, I mean, does it feel that way for you? Did you kind of relish that back and forth you and he had? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, when I live. And I, yeah, yeah, I agree with him. I basically, uh, I'm gonna send it to the top ten. I brought, uh, hopefully, they they, they receive uh, the message. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it was uh, quite a battle. Had to use the traffic and then had to make him go through a shallow line and all the stuff. And I don't know what, how, but I made it. I made it done, and I could pass uh, a car on on Sonoma, which is not very easy to do, actually. I mean. I think I gained five positions, two of them were, three of them were from incidents. So yeah, uh, well, it was a very, very good battle. I'm gonna remember for a long time. Now let's step back a week because we didn't get to talk to you uh, after Road America. We saw you teamed up with Togo Hisada. Were you actually planning on getting into the car to, to share with him? Or were we there coaching or uh, what, what went on there? Oh, uh, well, yeah, we, uh, we were supposed to, to drive uh, both uh, both the stints, but fortunately on the last thing they had that incident and blew the engine and it was like, well, they don't make the, uh, had the part of the car and that was, well, uh, it was a shame. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, an event that you only do once a year and well, it's still very, very proud of Togo with, uh, with the stints he had, were well, very quick. But yeah, I mean, it was disappointing that I couldn't get to drive a single lap. But yeah, it is what it is, it's racing. Yeah, so, uh, especially in team racing, sometimes those things just happen. But again, yeah. congratulations on the podium and hopefully we'll see you over in Germany. 
Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the podcast. I'll see you in the North Labor. That was Ator Sintez Galindo. Sounds like he plans to be here, and we hope you do too. But before we take off, we want to thank everybody at the IMSA Vintage community for bringing us back for another season of coverage as well. Thanks to the team today, Craig, Daniel, and Dougie. Make sure to check out our social media, our website, and our merchandise store. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a moment. Next race, as we've been mentioning, that'll be the Nürburgring, and it's at the 24-hour layout. So it's going to be the combined version. That'll be Saturday, April 27th at 1 p.m. Eastern. Be sure to check out our other broadcasts listed here. And until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track. <laughs>